people do. Sometimes when you have a voice, you just have to use it. Because just being an avatar on X doesn't cut it for some. In this particular case, I'm going to use my voice to stand up for Rita Lombardi because she's not on X, but she's being accused of things on X. Now I'm going to show you who and what and how, but before I do, I just want to tell everybody that is watching, do not go and attack this person. Not in their comments, not on X, nowhere, because this person doesn't know the characters or the background which is very evident given the fact that he's reading a lawsuit by none other than pro se vexatious litigant Blowhorn Betty as if it's a real threat to the true crime community. What you have to understand is this person who is speaking is a victim of a crime. His mother was murdered by his father and he's mostly a documentarian, not necessarily a true crime creator although he has moved into this realm and he's very new to it. So, no matter how well-meaning you might be, don't go over there and try to correct him. Let's just leave it at a video appealing to his good conscience. So, let's just start right there. This will be essentially me reacting to the comments that were made, followed by how I got to the bottom of where the comments came from and who they were about. There are so many creators who have come in who've sort of stepped into this world that don't quite understand how it works. For one thing, you know, freedom of speech is something that is really, you know, and I was having a conversation with Karen Fan, channel moderator, website designer, has been an amazing asset to me and this channel. And so thank you so much to Karen. I was discussing with Karen, you know, we were talking about freedom of speech and freedom of speech is, you know, designed to protect our freedom of speech against our government, right? Oh, you mean like protesting when there's obviously a ton of corruption in your government that you need to protest against? Kind of like Rita Lombardi and the local FKR protesters are doing? Does not mean that you can get onto a public platform and just start to assassinate people's characters, accusing them of doing things that, um, that they may or may not have done. Which, unfortunately, you have been suckered into doing right now during this podcast against somebody who isn't even on X. You know, that's why we have the court system, the judicial system. This is why we have people who are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. And protests so that you can speak out against your government doing shady stuff. So they are not hung out to, the, to dry. This is not the Salem witch trials. We do not tar and feather people in town square like we did, you know, centuries ago. People are guaranteed the due process of the law. Including Karen Reed. And due process is not what the protesters feel that she is getting. Hence why they're protesting. And I think when you look at certain cases of recent probably the most prominent would be Karen Reed. You've seen a lot of people go online and have one narrative versus another narrative. And you see narrative and you see this polarization, right? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say pretty much every court case is the same because there's only two sides. There's guilty and there's not guilty. But what sets Karen Reed's case aside from all the others is the current polls, which are showing us that at least 98% of the audience who watched the trial believe that Karen Reed is innocent and that she is being framed. And even the jurors thought she was mostly not guilty on two of three counts after they all saw the evidence. So we're not talking about like a 50-50 split as you might see during elections, for example. This great division that everyone keeps talking about is actually not there, according to the polls. And so they start doxing people or they start stalking people, using air quotes on that, or pursuing people in public venues to get them to comment or accusing them of certain things. I saw a recent, uh, a recent post on Twitter with regard to the Karen Reed case uh, where people were putting, um, people were putting, um, Decorating for Halloween in the in the um, 
Canton, Massachusetts area and putting tombstones in their yards with people's names that were involved either as witnesses or are thought of as potential ancillary characters or even perpetrators of a crime against John O'Keefe or, or against Karen Reed or somehow caught up in some conspiracy theory. Now, I did find the post and I do believe I found the source of the post, but we'll come back to that after I finish reacting to Collier's comments. I don't live there. I don't know these people from Adam. I've talked to people around the case. Uh, you know, there's a lot of differing opinions on it. It's not my business. <laughs> I comment on it like, okay, this is what I think is going on, but I cannot speak to what the community has experienced. I'm just sharing what I'm told. That's kind of the problem though, Collier. You saw an accusation with absolutely no evidence that these Halloween decorations actually did belong to somebody who you're accusing of putting them on their lawn. You did absolutely no research whatsoever to substantiate the claim. And because the claim matches the photograph attached to it, you have automatically assumed it to be true. Does not the person who's being accused of doing it deserve the right of reply? However, when people go out and they say these things or they accuse people of committing crimes, like actual crimes, including murder. And including accusations of witness intimidation, of course. That's not good, first of all. And your free speech is not really protected in that way. And to go and abuse and accuse people, you sort of just have to kind of, I don't know, use the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do to you. So I'm assuming that you wouldn't appreciate someone accusing you of doing something that you didn't do on the internet and on the YouTubes. And as a result, you wouldn't do it to somebody else. Yet here you are doing it to Rita Lombardi. And I think that that is where this particular lawsuit that we're going to get into has um, brought up some really, really good points because things like doxing, for example, uh, should not be allowed. You should not be allowed to put people's and, you know, there are there are people that do this. Oh, you mean like when attorney Melanie Little was doxed and harassed to the point where she got off X? and then had to threaten lawsuits to stop them from publishing her address. And there are people that call people out online and there are certain, there are certain protections that are afforded people in the law that law enforcement look at and can consider threats or not threats. Right. And it's, uh, I went through a lot of this a year ago. Um, I was, uh, partners in a podcast. My podcasting partner went after somebody in a public forum. I tried to calm who cooler heads will prevail and not only sabotage that product, which project, which cost me well over $50,000 of my own personal money, but also, um, uh, did a, did a lot of damage to me in the last year. I was just a bystander. <laughs> So you're not personally responsible for what your partner in that podcast did or the ruckus that was caused by it, but you're happy to tar everybody else with the same brush because of the behavior of supposedly one person. And uh, I was doxxed. I was, I was brought forth by different true crime communities and uh, a lot of people came after me primarily because they didn't know my story and they just uh but then they when they did know my story they sent me things such as like uh they were glad that my mother was murdered because i deserved it yes unfortunately we all attract those types to our channels not that we're aiming to not that any of them speak for us so i'm not going to deny that they're out there albeit few and far between um so uh, really heinous things are said uh People get their pitchforks, they light their torches, and they get behind a cause, and they don't really seem to think about their actions. So at the time, I had contacted a very good friend of mine in federal law enforcement and said, look, what are my options here? Because people are putting my address online. People are threatening to come to my house. People are threatening uh, people around me. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> and I learned what my options were, and I was like, okay. And it's all, you know, unfortunately, it's all very expensive. And uh, that's the part. So you got to kind of just take your licks and your wounds and just hope that it doesn't. Again, I wish people would follow the golden rule of do unto others and as you have them do to you. Well, I appreciate that you haven't mentioned a name. It only took me half a day of tracking things down to work out who is being accused of this thing 
that you have just announced to your audience. So, you know, you could have taken your own advice there and not said anything until you knew if it was true or not. However, people just don't do that. And I think a lot of people have gotten involved in this genre, talk and just think they can just say whatever they want. They can do whatever they want with impunity. That's just simply not the case. Again, because there are certain protections. And I said this not to get into politics. But I said this back in 2016 when my when President Trump was elected and my friends here in Hollywood were all out in the streets saying, not my president, oh, elections rigged. And I said, guys, this is really dangerous. I know that you might feel this way. There may or may not be proof of this. I have no idea. But it's just not good because what happens when it's your candidate? And then we all saw what happened. And now we're in a whole state of political chaos, right? So I look at it under the same lens of like, yes, you can dox and call all these people and say all this heinous stuff if you want. And you might be afforded protections under the law. But the same people can do that to you. Well, we won't be accusing you of doing anything just because your partner podcaster did something. In fact, the very person who is being accused of this heinous thing that you're talking about is not just a proponent of not lashing back. She is the living example of it. If she hears or sees someone doing something like that, she's the first one to pull them up. So if you're afforded protections and you're exploiting and you're putting out people's personal information saying this is where their kids go to school, this is what happens, this is getting involved in their personal lives. Oh, you mean like the very things that attorney Mark Bedero is currently exposing in the Bedero letters where a specific stalker who had a restraining order on her had stalked someone's children to a bus stop so she could relay to police when to arrest their parent for crimes that she herself accused him of and didn't provide any evidence of. You really should reach out and have another chat with Attorney Bedero, Collier. Now, I've put his link in the description so you can watch the whole live stream and listen to him talk about Blowhorn Betty's retaliation lawsuit. And by all means, type your opinions into his comments, but don't come at him sideways because he's not caught up to date with the information that we are. I know some of you like to do that, but don't. I'm not doing this to tear strips off the guy. I'm doing it so that he can be caught up with some information. And then, you know, it's his choice from this point whether he wants to listen or not. He may not want to listen to me. Like, who the hell am I anyway? Other than somebody who knows Rita and knows that Rita is not responsible for what he is saying she is responsible for. So let's get back to how I know it's Rita that he's talking about. Of course... I asked him straight out, can you point me in the direction of this supposed Halloween post that you referred to? But he didn't answer. You may note, I'm being ultra polite in explaining why I would like to get to the bottom of it. So a couple of people join in the conversation and we start tracking down the origin of the post. Someone eventually pipes up and says that they saw it posted on Facebook by a person named Kristen A. Lawn. I was unable to confirm that, but I mean, please, Chris and the Lawn, could they not think of something more original? For those who don't get it, let me spell it out for you. Christening a lawn with bleach balloons, for example. Pretty weird how the police can find out who threw a rubber ducky on the ground with a 37-page report, but they can't work out who bleached Rita's lawn, or who murdered the turtle and hung it on Aidan Carney's parents' fence just days before his mother passed away. Anyway, eventually we find at least one source who has posted it on Twitter. It doesn't say whose lawn it was found on, which is who you would want to be calling out, the person who actually put it on their lawn, right? But no, the post goes to great lengths to blame it all on Rita Lombardi. It goes on to accuse her of defending this disturbing cemetery decor at a select board meeting. And who is this Tuesday Gazette person anyway? Let me fill you in. 
This is one of Kate Peters' buddies. You know, the one of the Bedero Law Letters infamy. Most well known for setting people up for crimes they haven't committed and conspiring with the Alberts and McCabe's to somehow link Karen Reed to some sort of crime so that she can have her bail revoked. The same crowd who created a fake video and distributed the fake video of Alan Jackson appearing to be smooching with Karen Reed outside a restaurant somewhere. The Abby and I proved to be a fake, and one of their own crowd has since come forward and confirmed that it's fake. Congratulations, Collier. You just joined the fake outrage crowd. And what's more, you are basing it on the premise that an actual journalist is not allowed to do this. Proctor, what at, was at his home in Canton this afternoon when the Karen Reed case ended in a mistrial? We caught up with him just a few moments ago to ask him his thoughts on the outcome of the case. Trooper Proctor, Kathy Curran from NBC10. We'd like to ask you some questions. Do you, do you think your actions impacted the outcome of the trial? I'm not on your lawn, I'm on the street. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Now, let's not get into the argument of what an actual journalist is. I saw evidence that Aidan Carney has won awards for journalism, so that sets him aside from a YouTube creator or a blogger in my book, where others just don't like his personality, so they would tear him down. Let's not get into those arguments and just accept that journalists are able to do this stuff and retaliating against them for doing this stuff by hanging a murdered turtle on the balcony of his dying mother's house is far more egregious than what you're complaining about regarding Halloween decorations. But that is our perspective, and all we would ask you to do is speak with Bedero about this supposed scenario that you have just presented to almost 70,000 people in an attempt to smear the protesters who have a valid reason to be out there protesting. I'm not saying it was you who attempted to do it, I'm saying it's the people who gave you this information and suckered you into doing it. But please, just go speak to Bedero. I'm sure he can fill you in on all the details that you failed to look into yourself before you announced it. Let me close out by saying that I agree with your overall message. People shouldn't be doxing each other online. People shouldn't be threatening each other online. People shouldn't be sending pizzas to people they don't like online. People shouldn't be sending texts to the phones of someone who's been doxed online. But let's also acknowledge the difference between public figures who represent the community, like selectmen on the select board, Chris Albert, for example, or cops who are supposed to protect and serve their communities, or the local DA who is elected by his community. The people who live in those communities have every right to protest them, to call out their wrongdoings. It's those people and their families who are targeting the protesters and trying to frame them for things they haven't done, like witness intimidation, for example. Those officials that I just mentioned have been targeting citizens with witness intimidation for many more years before Officer John O'Keefe was murdered. So firmly planting your feet in amongst those who are abusing their power to take a position against those who are protesting them is very rocky ground indeed.